Hello, everybody. Happy Friday. Ooh, I'm in the squeaky chair today. Hello, everybody. Uh, first, I want to start today's live chat. I want to just thank y'all for joining me. Thank you so much. I want to thank my moderators. Thank you so much, Sylvia and Dari. And Miss Dari, I just want to let you know, I saw your comment uh, in the live chat. And just to let you know, myself, along with everybody else, is praying for your family. I'm so sorry to hear about the loss in your family. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hello, everybody. Hello. Gail, yes, the 10 by 10 is, well, no. Okay, so the 10 by 10 is the accent fabric, okay? Uh, here's the ornament we're making today, y'all. It's the little cathedral window ornament. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, I turned on the, we turned on the heat this week just a little bit to take off the chill, right? And now my sinuses are all messed up. Uh, last week I showed this and I told you the pieces that we need for today and I'm going to go over those here in just a minute. But I also typed them out in a little list in the description box. The, uh, the 10 by 10 fabric, if you see this green little accent fabric, that's going to be your 10 by 10 piece. Hello everybody. Debbie, I was wondering about updates. Surgery on Tuesday. Okay, please keep us updated. Oh my goodness, y'all. So much to pray about this week. So much to pray about. Just raising y'all up, everybody. So today, uh, there is no printable pattern, but I'm going to go over the things that you need to make this ornament. And it's going to be pretty simple, y'all. I mean, I know it looks kind of a little bit complicated, but we're going to break down the steps. Katrina's got her motivation to quilt back. Yay! <laughs> okay, y'all, uh, I'm going to go ahead and switch the camera over. I'm going to show you the pieces and the few things that you need to make this ornament, okay? Cutting mat. Here we go. So here's the little ornament. <gasps> you know what I forgot? I forgot to get some ribbon for my hanger. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no, I didn't. Here. Here's some. It's the thick stuff that I don't want to use, but here we go. <laughs> All this stuff you have to get ready for the live. So let's go over the fabric pieces, y'all. All right, you need two five by five inch pieces, right? One's gonna be the back of your ornament, and one is gonna be right where you see the red. That's gonna be your other five by five inch piece. You need a four and a half by four and a half inch square, and that's gonna go where you see the blue. All right? And then your 10 by 10, that's gonna be this little green popping up, the little accent on the front. Okay? Uh, Y'all, I'm gonna be using a glue stick today. You don't have to, you could grab some pins. Uh, you'll need a button. I have a couple different colors because I'm undecided which color to use at this point. <laughs> I have a handful of polyfill. This is what we're going to stuff our little ornament with. Uh, you're going to need a needle with an eye that's big enough for some thicker thread. And today I'm going to be using some of my Nana's DMC thread. I have not yet chosen the color, so I just brought one of her little containers over here. And we'll choose the color when we get to that part. Diana said, I have two four and a half by four and a half. Did I type it wrong? Maybe I typed it wrong. You need two five by fives. One four and a half by four and a half. Vicki, thank you so much for moderating today. I'm going to heat up this iron because we'll be using it right in the beginning. Right in the beginning, and I'm going to scoot this over just a little bit. Scoot, 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 scoot. <laughs> Actually, let's put him here so that we can reference where these pieces are going to go. Okay, Diana said, no, my mistake. Okay, just making sure that I've typed out the pieces correctly. Because <laughs> I make mistakes all the time, y'all. It might have been something I needed to go change. 
To begin this ornament, y'all, we're going to start with this 10 by 10 inch piece. Okay, so grab that. Get your iron warming up. Y'all, this ornament is so pretty. I did not make up this pattern. There's a couple videos out on YouTube on this. I happened to come across Stitch with Rick's YouTube channel while I was searching how to make a cathedral quilt, cathedral window quilt, and got totally sidetracked by his video one day and ended up making this ornament. And I was like, you know what? We should make this. Celeste, I am so, so sorry. We will be praying for you as well. Y'all, there is lots of prayer requests this week. Wow. I just want to thank you for hanging out. I'm hoping that this video uh, brings a little bit of joy to your day. You're in good company. All right. I think my iron is warming up some. <laughs> She's been asleep for about three hours. We're going to start with this first piece. We're going to fold it in half. I'm going to move this over. There we go. We're going to fold it in half, but we're going to fold it in half so that the pretty side is facing out, right? We're going to fold it in half one time. And we're going to press it just to get that center line. And then we're going to fold it in half one more time. And this is going to give us a center line going the other way, right? So that's going to give us two creases going across our block. And we can open it back up. And the lighting might be a little... Uh, make it a little bit hard to see, but there's pretty decent sized creases in it. I'm going to just hit it with my iron and flatten it out. It'll still keep those lines, but it'll help flatten out this piece a little bit. So I don't know if you can see that. My fabric choices might have been poor for video purposes, <laughs> but the center line is still there and you should still see it on yours too. I have to look at my notes. <laughs> All right. Because I've only made one of these. So I'm, I'm really hoping that I don't mess anything up. All right. We're going to turn this block so that the pretty side is facing down. Right? So we've got our lines. Pretty side facing down. Aw, oh, y'all are so sweet. This is where I'm going to start using my glue stick, y'all. And you don't have to do this, but it just helps me keep everything together. Okay? Uh, I'm going to put a little dot of glue towards the center. And we're going to start bringing these corners, and we're going to bring them right into those pressed crease lines like that. So we're pressing. We're bringing in the next corner. And then we're going to do the same thing for the next two corners. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. So we have one more corner to bring in. And we're pressing that. <laughs> and it's been about two weeks since I made this ornament. So I'm referring to my notes, y'all, because I don't want to mess up. Fold the corners in and press. Now we're going to fold the corners back in again, okay? So our square is now smaller. Now we're folding these corners in one more time to the center. This time I'm not using a glue stick yet, right? 
We're just pressing. That little bit of touch of glue just helps keep those pieces from shifting around and I get neater results, but you certainly don't have to do that. Pressing. And flipping around and pressing one more time. Pressing, pressing, pressing. Okay, so it has four little flips, right? See those four little flips? I'm thinking the red fabric is so hard to see. I'm so sorry about that. So at this point, we're just gonna let that sit for a second. We're gonna bring in one of our five inch by five inch pieces, right? We have two of them. One is gonna be for the back. I'm gonna use the red one for my back. So let's set that aside. And then we have the other five inch by five inch piece. We're going to open up these flips and I'm going to use a little bit of glue stick, y'all. Just four little swipes. And I'm going to lay this five inch piece right down inside. See that? These will go right back over. I'm just going to press that one more time and that's going to dry that glue and really settle in that five inch piece inside. It does look like an envelope, doesn't it? Vicki has a question about her quilt, y'all. She has a... Uh, Cotton quilt top, and she got a polyester sheet for the backing. Can she use it? Vicki, I've used all kinds of stuff for my quilt backs. <laughs> I don't know if I'm the person you want to listen to. I've used microfiber snuggly flat sheets for my quilt backs before. And let me just tell you, I made a throw for Harlan a few years ago. It was like four years ago. We're going to let that cool off. And I put a microfiber flat sheet on the back of his quilt. And to this day, it's his favorite quilt to sit and watch TV with. And let me just tell you, if you're going to press your quilt, like if you're putting on a binding and you need to press those edges, you need to lower the temp on your iron because polyester is heat sensitive. And if you're making a quilt for a baby, you probably don't want to use a polyester backing right but uh you can certainly use it for yourself and for bed quilts and things like that and keep in mind that some polyester sheets will pill after so long right so many uses so many washings sometimes polyester sheets do have a tendency to get those little pilling bumps on them so just keep that in mind if it's for a baby quilt, I would not use a polyester sheet. I would find a cotton one. All right, that should be nice and cooled off. We have our little five inch piece tucked in there, right? And now we're gonna bring this over to the sewing machine. Now you can tack down these little, <laughs> these little corners by hand if you want to. By all means, if you like to hand sew, you can certainly do it by hand. You would just hand tack these little four corners right to the center. <laughs> I'm going to do it by machine and I'm going to show you a quick way to do it. Okay. I'm going to bring you over to the sewing machine now. And we're going to set up a straight stitch on the machine. All right. So I have the straight stitch on. I'm going to increase the length. To a 5.0. That's going to give us a nice long little stitch, right? 
This is what I'm doing for my cathedral window blocks for the quilt I'm making. I'm not stitching these down by hand. <laughs> All right, so straight stitch 5.0 is the length, and we're gonna lower that needle right in the center where all these four corners come together. I'm just gonna lower the needle right down in there. And I'm using an open toe foot so that hopefully you can see a little bit easier. And here's what we're gonna do, y'all. We're going to take one stitch forward. Stop. Now I'm gonna take two stitches back. And when I do, it's gonna land in this uh, upper corner, right? I'm gonna take two stitches forward. It's gonna come back down into this one. And now I'm gonna take one stitch back to the center. And we're stopping. I'm gonna lift up that presser foot. I can trim away this little thread tail. And now we're gonna tack down the opposite ones, right? We're going into the first. We're gonna back stitch twice. We're gonna come back down into this one. One, two, and we're going back to the center. That's how I'm stitching down all of my corners for my quilt. So much faster than hand sewing. Let me trim this little thread tail. I got a little bit of a nest on the back side, but that's what it looks like on the back side. This is what it looks like from the front, right? Just a little cross tacking down those four corners. That's it. I need to oil this chair. <laughs> it's really hard to see. All right, can you see it now? I used a thread that kind of blends into my ornament fabric. Uh, but maybe you can see it like that. Hopefully you can see that. All right, so because we have folded this fabric on the bias, it's gonna stretch a little bit, right? And so the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to fold back those edges. I really did pick a very difficult fabric to see. Let me put this here. We're gonna fold back these edges, right? And it's gonna make this little swooshy this little swooshy shape, just like that. See that? It's also gonna start revealing that five inch fabric that we put in the center, right? So we're gonna bring this over to the sewing machine. You can, of course, sew this down by hand if that's what you like to do. I'm gonna sew it down by the sewing machine. So we're gonna go back to the sewing machine Maybe if I bring the light in a little bit more, it'll make it easier to see. Hopefully that's a little bit better. So here's our piece. We're just gonna go right around and I'm gonna do this by hand. You can certainly pull this back and pin each one of these sections if that's easier for you but I just do it by hand and hold them down with my fingers as I work around. So we're gonna start on this side. See that? I'm gonna lower the needle right down into that folded back piece like that. Keep in mind because this is an ornament and we still have to put a back on it, that this edge will be sewn all the way around so I'm not necessarily gonna do a back stitch each time I come to the edge because we will be locking this down one more time when we add a back to it. All right, so I can lower my stitch length now and I'm gonna lower it down to like a 2.4. 
we're going to be stitching right along the edge, the curved edge. And as we start approaching the center, I'm going to go ahead and fold back the next piece like that. See that? And we're going to rotate it. And now we're coming back around on the other side. <gasps> nope. Yeah, we got to put the little accents in there. See, I'm sitting here thinking a cathedral block quilt. No, we don't want to do this yet. Hold up. Let me pick these out, y'all. I'm glad I remembered that before we got too, fur, too far along. Let me pick these little stitches out. <laughs> See, now if we weren't live, I might have said a bad word. But I'm trying to hold it back. Trying to hold it back. Let me just unfold those. Because I got way ahead of myself. And picked those little threads out. <laughs> Pick the little threads out. Ooh, I'm glad I didn't choose a really tight stitch because that would have been a pain. Although, I guess if you didn't put the accent in, this would look like a traditional cathedral window block, wouldn't it? Still pretty. But not what we're trying to do today. All right, Lisa, get it together. All right, nothing that can't be undone. <laughs> I'm pick all these little threads out. There we go. See, we're back to where we started. Okay, before I get ahead of myself again, we're bringing in the accent fabric, the four and a half by four and a half. <laughs> okay. This fabric we're going to cut two times, right? We're going to cut it in half on the diagonal. Oh, I'm so glad I remembered this. We're going to cut it right in half. And then we're going to cut it in half the other way. Corner to corner. This is going to give us four little triangles, y'all. All right, Lisa. There we go. There's the four little triangles. Are you sewing close to the folded down edge or does it matter? So when I'm sewing, let's fold this back. I really should have picked a different fabric. When I fold this back, it has a little curved edge. I'm sewing close to the curved edge, the folded curved edge. All right, <laughs> let's add these accent colors in. All right, so with our four little triangles, we're going to place them right along the edge, right? like that. And I like to just glue stick mine down to keep them in place. Sorry, y'all, I have threads on my glue stick. One, two, three, four little dabs of glue. You could pin it. So we're just lining up that straight edge right there. And these triangles are going to fit right in there, just like what you see here. I 
have a feeling it's going to be a long winter, y'all. We just turned the heat on just a smidgen just to take the chill out. And already my skin is itchy. My, we had to turn on the humidifier in the bedroom because my nose was stuffy. There we go. It's going to be a long winter. It's not even that cold yet. <laughs> Here, we're going to dry that glue. Now we can start sewing down these edges. Beverly said, I do not know what I did before glue sticks. Me too. Me too, Miss Beverly. <laughs> We're going to let that cool off just for a second. Ooh, it's still really hot. So glad I remembered that. All right, so here's what we're doing, and I'm hoping that uh, you'll be able to see this. Now that the blue's in there, you might be able to see it more. So we're going to fold this folded edge right over like that. You could put some pins in there to help hold it down. You could even use a little bit of glue if you wanted to, right? But we are gonna come in and I'm trying to sew along this curved edge. Not the straighter of the edges, but along this curved edge. I think maybe you'll be able to see that better now that I've added the blue. All right, we're coming back to the sewing machine, y'all. And again, we're, I'm just folding that over. Lowering the needle right into that fold. I really don't want that blue fabric to stick out there. There we go. And now we're stitching again, right? As I start to approach to center, I like to go ahead and fold over the next one. And my fingers might get in the way, but I'm just holding it down with my fingers. And the needle just caught the second one. So it's going to hold that in place as we flip it around. See that? And we're sewing right to the edge. So I'm just going to take that off so that you can see that first little triangle that we did. Now this might take some practice, right? But once you get it, you kind of really get it. Now we're gonna fold over that second one. About halfway through, I go ahead and lift up the next curved edge and fold that over. That's just me. You might figure out a technique that works better for you. I like to just go ahead and take it right off the machine and start folding over the next one. You might be able to just flip that and keep on sewing continuously. I 
I'm hoping now that you can see a lot better with this blue fabric in there. See the white starting to pop up through the middle? And we have one more little triangle to do. All right, so there she is. Ooh, she's going to be pretty. She is going to be pretty. All right. So that's where we are right this minute. And if you're sewing with me live, I'm going to just take a pause for a minute and see if we have any questions. What presser foot are you using? Yeah, that's an open toe foot. Thank you, Miss Sylvia. Michigan's got snow already. Oh my glory. <laughs> yeah, the blue really helped give a little pop to the red, didn't it? Now on mine, my first one, I chose a completely different fabric. I used four different fabrics, right? So we had the green, the red, the blue, and then I picked that really fun fabric for the back. So it was four different fabrics. For this one, I wanted to use the same fabric for the back as my little accents. So this will be my back fabric. That'll be cute. All right, so at this point, we're ready to go ahead and put in our little hanger, right? Is this thinner than this one? It is. This first uh, ornament that I made, I used a little bit of a thicker ribbon. And I don't know if you can see that. It was a little awkward to get it right in the corner, and so it sewed into part of the side. So if you have a thinner ribbon, or maybe even a yarn or something, uh, the thinner the ribbon, I think the easier time you're going to have with the little hanger. So this one is a little bit thinner. You need about 8 inches or so. Of course, you can change the size of your hanger if you like. So I just cut off a piece of ribbon. <laughs> I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I am going to just put a smidgen of glue stick there. And I'm going to hold that in place just like that for a second. We're just going to let that grab and dry for just a second. Again, you don't have to do this. This just helps me keep my ribbon as neat and pretty as possible. Kind of just lining it up like that. Phyllis, I think you could do this with a thin layer of batting, but so far, no, there's no batting inside. We're going to sew on a backing and then stuff this with polyfill here in just a second. So that's pretty well tacked in, right? We're going to add this to one of the corners, just like that. And this will be where I use the 
one and only pin for today. <laughs> I'm going to take my pin and I'm just going to pin it right to the corner. Just like that. See that? Then we're going to bring in our backing fabric and we're going to put this pretty side down. Just like that. And we're going to sew all the way around, but make sure to leave an opening. And you might want to leave your opening a little bit bigger because we have, you know, some fabric to stuff through that opening. So uh, like a good two, two and a half inches. And we're going to make sure to backstitch at the beginning and the end. We're going to sew all the way around. And I like to use like a quarter inch seam allowance. That seems to work pretty well for me. going to go back to the sewing machine. You can uh, pin these pieces in place if that is helpful for you. I'm just going to hold them there. <laughs> Live dangerously. Just like that. See how everything's lined up. I'm going to start on the side. We're going to set this quarter inch seam allowance. With my open toe foot, I have to scoot over just a little bit. There we go. And I'm going to start down here like that. We're going to take a couple stitches and we're going to back stitch. That's going to lock that opening in place. I like to sew right off the edge. You can sew and pivot if you like. Coming up to that pin, I'm just going to take that pin right out. Coming along the third side. And this is the fourth side, so we're only going to sew in just a little bit and then we're going to back stitch I like to leave a little bit of a bigger opening <laughs> All right so there's our back sewn on Now we can just take some scissors and we can trim off the extra little ribbon. And then I like to just trim off a little bit of these corners. See that? Careful not to cut your stitches. But that'll just help our corners poke out a little bit more. And then we can flip this right side out. But when you do, here's what I want to show you. When you go to flip it, notice that little triangle accent fabric, right? Make sure you're not grabbing inside that triangle fabric. Make sure to hold that down with your finger. See that? And then you can pull it right side out. At this point, we're almost done. Turning, turning, turning. Go in and poke those corners out. Poke, poke, poke. <laughs> You 
You know what would be really cute is if instead of putting the ribbon inside, you leave the ribbon out and you make this a pin cushion. Wouldn't that be pretty? We did a whole pin cushion series. I think this would make an awesome pin cushion. Just poking out those corners. You can even go in with a little pokey tool and just really poke them out. Isn't that pretty? Oh, she's so pretty. Now before I stuff this, I'm going to go ahead and see if I can't press in this little opening just to make it a little bit neater. You really have uh, two choices on how to close this opening. Let me give that a press real quick before I move on. See how I just turned in that opening just a little bit? I'm going to go ahead and press it just to help keep it like that a little bit. Yes, we even did the swap. That was a lot of fun. I'm going to press this whole ornament, but trying to be really careful not to press that ribbon. <laughs> you don't want to melt the ribbon. Vicki said, looks like I'm making a few of these for gifts. Aren't they pretty? You know what? I don't even know that you have to stuff this as an ornament. I think that's gorgeous just the way it is. Don't you? Don't you think that's pretty? But we're going to go ahead and stuff it. So the first one that I made, this is it. This is the first one. I stuffed it and then brought it over to the sewing machine and I did a straight stitch all the way around the edge. So it made this one uh, look a little bit different than the way this one is going to look, right? Because it flattened down the edges. Sort of like a hot pocket, <laughs> right? So that's a really quick way, especially if you don't like to hand sew, a really quick way. Put your stuffing in, but not too much. And then bring it over to the sewing machine and sew all the way around the edge. Little straight stitch. I'm going to torture y'all a little bit and I'm going to hand sew this one closed so that you can see, you know, if you're going to make these and you're like wondering what does it look like not sewn by machine, you can see the two different ways that it's going to finish. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of polyfill in here. And I'm pushing my polyfill towards the four corners because we still have uh, a button to add right in the center. But we're not doing that yet. I'm just letting y'all know if you need to take a bathroom break or you want a snack or a drink, <laughs> uh, you're going to have a good few minutes while I hand sew this opening. And I'm going to try to go fast, but I'm not the fastest hand sewer. Y'all can see I'm not using a lot of this. Just a little pools of it. And I'm really just putting it right into those four corners. So the middle even feels a little bit more hollow than the four corners do. And that's all we need of that. So let me get a little needle. Uh, do I want to use that one? Let me pull off a little bit of thread. I'm going to try to do a quick little whip stitch just to close this opening. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Is this a self-threading? Ooh, it is. Okay. <laughs> Gonna tie a knot at the end of the thread.
Charlie said, hand stitching while watching TV works. Yes, it does. All right, so I have the little knot at the end of my thread. I know you can't see that. And I'm just going to try to do a quick little whip stitch. <laughs> Now's the time to take your little breaks. Especially since I have shaky hands, y'all. All right, quick whip stitch. Mm -hmm. If I was doing this not on a live video, I would probably make my stitches closer together. So don't judge me for my stitches. And because I made my opening larger to make it easier to turn, I have a little bit of a bigger opening to stitch together. And these are big stitches, y'all. I'm fully aware of that. <laughs> I know. So what are your plans for this weekend? What projects are you trying to finish up or have you just got started with? Ooh, if you're on Patreon, don't forget, uh, I've already uploaded the uh, Cathedral Black Window Quilt. You could make some mug rugs if you want this weekend. Push that stuff and back down in there. Ouchie. <laughs> oh, goodness. This is probably not the sharpest needle to be using for this. But it still hurts when you poke your finger with it. <laughs> You know what I probably should have done? I probably, if I would have thought this through a little bit more, I probably should have hand stitched the first one and then did the one during the live by the machine. Sometimes I don't think that far ahead. <laughs> All right, so there's my little whip stitch. And I'm just going to pull it. Hopefully my thread don't break. I'm just going to pull it closed. Ooh, thank you. There we go. All right, so that's good. Let me tie this off. That didn't take that long. That was faster than I thought it was going to be. All right, so we're just gonna tie off this little thread. And I'm gonna bury that thread right into the middle of the ornament and cut it. That did not take as long as I thought it would, y'all. <laughs> so at this point, she looks like a little stuffed pillow, right? See how the edges are gonna be more round? versus doing it by machine. See that? Two different looks. Now we're gonna pick a button. I brought over my yellow, blue, and red. I think there's enough red going on. It needs to be blue or yellow. See the little pops of yellow in the flowers? Which one do y'all think, blue or yellow? Dun, 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 dun. Oh, I 
think I kind of like the yellow. Oh, y'all say yellow too. We got a couple of blues. Aww. Blue, 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 yellow, yellow. All right, I'm gonna go with yellow, y'all. I think, I don't know that you could go wrong with either. But I'm gonna pick a yellow one. Oh, I'll get that later. <laughs> Big or little, big or little. Oh, I like the little one. All right, so there we go. And so, DMC threads and a yellow. That's too bright. That's the same. That works. Let me try this one. <laughs> I'm having a hard time committing today. There we go. Y'all, I have five of these containers from my Nana. They're all numbered and everything. We're going to use some of this really light yellow. And I'm putting you back in where I found you. Right like that. And now I have a needle that's got a little bit of a bigger eye. And we're just going to sew this button right in the middle to finish this. Red thread? Oh, y'all are saying red thread. Do we have some red in here? We do. All right. Okay. I'm going to put this yellow black, yellow back. <laughs> I'm not wasting none of my Nana's thread. She would be so proud. It still looks so organized. <laughs> All right, what do we got here? It looks like she's used some of this before. Pulling off a piece. I think it needs to be a little bit longer than that. At least for me to work with. There we go. And let me put this piece back. Ooh, there just goes the mailman. I'm hoping he picked up my box because I have a quilt going back. I've had so much fun this past week doing some quilting. And I have a couple more quilts on their way to me, so that's what I'm doing next week. All right. I'm not gonna tie a knot at the end of my thread. I probably should. But let me show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to come in from the back, right in the middle. That's why I like these longer needles too, right? Right through the middle. And we're coming up. I'm going to leave a little bit of a thread tail. See why I like my thread longer? <laughs> and before we add the button, I'm going right back down, but not in the same hole. Just a little space over. And close to that thread tail. And we're gonna pre-bunch this little puffy pillow. For me, it's just easier to do this when adding the button in the middle, right? So I like to pre-bunch it. <laughs> Three bunched. There we go. And now we can go back up to the mid to the top. And we can add the button. Of 
course I picked a button that has four holes so it's gonna take a second Oh, I'm glad y'all said the red thread. That is cute. That is cute. All right. Going back up. We're going to catch the second set. I always have a hard time finding the next set of holes. There we go. And back down. Aw. I'm glad y'all said the red thread. That is super cute. <laughs> That's so cute. All right. So now we have this thread tail again. I'm going to tie it in a knot. It's going to lock in that button. But to make the back nice and neat, I'm going to bury the first thread tail. I'm just going in right close to where those threads are knotted. We're going to bury that thread tail. And then I'm going to re-thread the needle. And we're going to bury this first original longer thread. Sorry. There we go. Again, going right in. And we're going to bury that thread tail. It's going to give us a nice clean little knot right in the center, but no loose little hanging threads. I know that's hard to see. Pretty, right? Now, I probably could have add more stuffing than what I did. I guess you could make yours really, really poofy. Look, I have a little empty space there. I'll try to squishy some of this stuffing around. I probably could have used more. So let's take a look at the two ornaments because it definitely has two different looks. See that? I think both of them are cute. So I think either way that you finish them, they're still pretty, right? Hey, isn't that so cute? Look, the thinner ribbon is gives you a much neater little hanger versus the thicker ribbon. See that? I think this will hang nice and straight on the tree versus this one's going to want to do a little half turn on the tree. <laughs> right? Are you using embroidery thread? Yes, this is uh, DMC thread. The embroidery thread to sew on my button. Phyllis said, do you attach a button and go through the back side? Yep, that's exactly what we did. Isn't that cute? I really kind of like that I used the same fabric as the accents. For my back on this one see that and I really think it's kind of funny that out of that whole great big 10 inch by 10 inch piece all that you see of it is the little accent but it's really the binding of what holds this whole thing together though right the foundation of this ornament but all you see of it is this little pop of accent on the front Oh, could you also add a button to the back? Oh, you could. I guess you could certainly do that, couldn't you? Yeah, it's really cute, right? So, yeah, I just had to share that with y'all because, like I said, uh, I came across a video tutorial, Stitch with Rick. That was the video that I watched. And I got totally sidetracked one day, and I ended up making this one. I was like, yeah, that was so much fun. We're going to make that. So 
Super cute. You know what I think you could do even is instead of using polyfill, you could leave it unstuffed or before you put the backing on and before you flip these edges over, layer a piece of batting and then it would kind of look quilted, right? And then do your backing. I think that would be gorgeous too. I might even make some of those. <laughs> Yes, so that's the ornament, y'all. That is it. That is so pretty. Yeah, so my live videos usually take about an hour, and then we chit-chat at the end. So an hour, 20 minutes, an hour and a half, right? But I really kind of slow down the process. And we do some chit-chatting here and there throughout making our projects, right? I really don't think this ornament takes you an hour to make it. It doesn't. And especially after you make the first or second one, you start breezing through them. Just like with the cath cathedral window quilt blocks, uh, I think you get faster and faster. So I think y'all could make several of these ornaments pretty quickly, like in an afternoon. So if you have, uh, you know, a gift exchange coming up or Christmas gift ideas, uh, these make really nice ornaments. And you know what? They kind of look way harder than what they actually are. Especially after you do a couple of them, they really look a lot harder. And people are like, whoa, how did she do that? Right? I love those kind of projects. <laughs> I'm just reading through y'all's comments. Quilt the back before you sew it together. Ooh, yes, you could do that too. I guess there's like a million different ways that you could do it, right? Just like with everything. Terry said, I'm using it as a pin cushion. Yes, I think that would be such an adorable pin cushion. I really do. I think I should have used more stuffing because my sides are a little weak. <laughs> I guess I could open it back up. I did not use a very tight uh, whip stitch there. I could open it back up pretty quickly and add a little bit more stuffing in there. And I think I'm going to do that because, see, look, my sides are like eh, tucking in. <laughs> and I want it to be a little bit more full. So I'll probably do that this afternoon. Ah, oh, Tracy just got here. Yeah, you'll have to come back to the beginning. Sand of the Sun said, I have crushed walnut shell left over from our pincushion swap. I will make these. Oh, that would be perfect. Yes, because that's a really good filler for pincushions, isn't it? So there we go, y'all. That is, that is the ornament. That is everything to do to make the ornament. I promise you, the first one might be awkward when you're making it. But they do get easier and easier. And you tend to get neater and neater the more you make. So if you make the first one and you're like, oh, I don't love it. It doesn't look quite as neat. Make another one. And I guarantee you, your second one will be better than your first one. And just keep on going. Ah, oh, Betty. Hello, Miss Betty. Thank you so much. Tracy said, I watched multiple times. 
I do the same thing when I'm trying to learn something too. I do the same thing. All right, y'all. I look forward to, because I know I miss a lot of the chat when I'm sewing. Hopefully, uh, all the questions were answered. If not, we're going to hang out for just a minute. If you asked a question earlier and I missed it, uh, and you're still here, I would love an opportunity to answer any questions. I'm going to switch the screen over. There we go. So if you're still here and I accidentally missed your question, we can go over that or we can just chit chat for a minute. I have a friend, Ms. Sheila. Y'all remember Sheila? She came uh, on a live with me one day. She was here. And then afterwards, we uh, folded some fabric as I was, y'all, I've got all my fabric all done. Uh, but she's coming this afternoon. We're going to hang out for a little bit. Gail said, I know we have a lot to pray for to encourage us to give us a praise report. Yes. Last Wednesday, I had a bad bruiser flare up and ended up in the ER. Oh, no. I'm hoping that uh, you're feeling much better. Oh, yay. Yeah, she said, so today I went back to work without the cane and no pain. Yes. That's awesome. Charlie, you're so welcome. If making these into a pin cushion, what stuffing is recommended? I only have polyfill. Well, certainly, Terry, you could you could use just polyfill. Uh, but your pin cushion is going to be really light, right? This is super light. And sometimes with a light pin cushion, when you pick up the pin, your pin cushion comes up, right? <laughs> so you could weigh it down. Uh, now, sometimes I throw some rice in there. And not everybody likes to use rice because, oh, you know, it could attract bugs and whatnot. I like throwing rice in my pin cushions. But a lot of people use the crushed walnut shells too. And that actually has the benefit of sharpening your pins as you're using the pin cushion, right? But um, you could throw some steel wool in there. But I do think just polyfill makes your pin cushion a little light, which is okay. You just might want to hold it down with your fingers when you're pulling out the pins, right? Because if not, <laughs> it's a little light. Lisa, you caught me a lot. How are you doing, Lisa? Vicki said uh, you could put some beach sand in it. Yeah, Diana, post your pictures on Creative Crew. I would love to see it. Oh, Sheila's here. Oh, she's getting ready. She's been listening while she's getting ready. <laughs> oh, so Sheila just said the problem with steel wool is it can cause your pins to rust if you live in a humid environment. Yeah, that's probably pretty smart thinking. I hadn't thought about that. So maybe if you live in a drier climate... The steel wool would be okay. Yeah, so what are we doing next week? I have no idea. I have no clue what we're doing next week. <laughs> Sorry. Y'all, it's been such a busy uh, end of summer, transitioning into fall, and going into the Christmas season, I have been swamped. I've even missed several Zooms on Creative Crew because by the time the night comes, I'm done. I just put on my pajamas and I'm done. And, uh, and even some nights I've been working. So I've missed some of the Zooms on Creative Crew. I miss seeing everybody. I'm certainly not avoiding y'all, but I'm just exhausted. <laughs> I'm so tired. At night, I'm just uh, 
done. Uh, let's see. Becky said crushed walnut like the one from the grocery or is there some for crafting? Both, Miss Be Becky. Uh, I think you can find it at the crafting stores. Can you find it in the grocery? I don't know. I've never seen it there. Celeste, I'm so glad that uh, we could be company for you today. Please keep us updated. Uh, Charlie said, Lizard litter is less expensive. Fine ground walnut shells. Check it out at the pet store. Yes. Oh, yeah, so Dari and Debbie both said the same thing. Go to the pet store. See, I was lucky that Harlan has a great big bag of it because I think he has used it in his uh, tumbler to polish rings. So I didn't have to buy any. Harlan already had some. <laughs> Sharon, you're so welcome. I'm glad you love the ornament. I hope you make them. Y'all, uh, if you're members of Creative Crew, everyone would love to see your ornaments if you make these. So make sure to share pictures. And it's a very safe place to share your stuff and ask for questions. And if you're not on the Facebooks, send me a picture on Etsy. I would love to see it. Yes, I hope y'all have a fantastic weekend. Uh, keep an eye out for a thumbnail towards the end of next week to see what we're doing uh, because I have no clue. It might just be a chatty Friday. We shall see. <laughs> I have a few big projects I'm working on and that seems to be taking up uh, a good majority of my working time and the time that I would be planning like next week's video. So uh, we'll see how the next few days go. I have a couple quilts on their way to me that will need to be quilted and sent back. So that's going to be uh, consuming some of my time as well. So we'll see what we're doing. It'll be a surprise. Ah, so Tasha said, I'm going to play around with the fabric squares the sizes to see if I can make it a bit smaller. Yes, oh, well, I'm sure you could, absolutely. Just start with a smaller uh, foundation fabric. So instead of 10 inch by 10 inch, reduce that. And then when you get to the different stages, you can measure for the next pieces, right? All right, y'all, I hope you have a fantastic rest of your weekend. I'm red and yellow. Have I been freezing? It might be a great time to end anyway because I just saw a flash of red. I hope y'all have a fantastic weekend. Just letting you know, everyone who's asked it for a prayer request, we are praying for you. We are lifting you up. Please keep us posted, okay? And uh, yeah, we'll see you all next week. Bye, everybody. Ooh, Terry just posted to Facebook. Awesome. I'm going to go check it out, Terry. See y'all later.